Welcome everyone to our Dave Campbell Sex Football Recruiting Roundup. Today we will be talking about the TCU Horn Frogs. As always, we've got Greg Powers over here from Next Level Athlete. Greg, thanks for joining us. Hey, what's going on? Glad to be here. And we also have a very special guest, uh, Jeremy Clark from Horn Frogs Blitz. Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us. You bet. Let's let's don't cut up the uh, special too much now. I'm not real special. <laughs> Hey, it's always, a, it's always a good time to get the most connected man in TCU athletics in the house. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into it, okay? So TCU sitting right now a week before the early signing period. Uh, a top 40 national class per 247 sports, 13 commits at this point, including three four-star commits. Uh, Jeremy, let's go ahead and get started with you. When you look at the landscape right now of TCU's recruiting class, uh, how have things gone so far? How do they sit? This is one of the actually better classes I've seen them get. I mean, if you're, you're coming off a, a year that was really disappointing to TCU fans, they go five and seven and everyone's thinking the worst. They're going to lose all kinds of commits and, and really they've done a great job. The staff has done a great job of uh, keeping a hold of those uh, commitments and, and, and really going out and finding some of these, these big time guys late in the process. You look at a guy like Garrett Hayes, he's rated as one of the top offensive tackles in the country. And they just landed him a few weeks ago. And then you have Patrick Jenkins, who was committed to LSU for quite a while. He decommitted and switches to TCU not too long ago. And you have another guy that's not even mentioned as part of this class, according to our rankings. But Jaquay Sorrells actually signed with South Carolina last year in the 2019 class. He didn't go to school. And now he's going to be at TCU. He's signing with them next week. He's going to enroll in January. But he was a top. 15 defensive tackle in the nation last year so the way they've gone out and and really finished the class they, they didn't have a big class that's why they only have 13 commitments right now but for them to be ranked 40th overall that just shows you not really the the the, the search for quantity but just the quality of these players i mean the, the each one of those players are pretty highly regarded and, and they fill some big position needs they've got a few out there that they still got to go get but Overall, I'm very pleased with where they're at right now. Number 40 in the, in the country off the season like they had is pretty impressive. Jeremy, before uh, we get into talking about our favorite players in the class, can you give us an idea numbers-wise how, how big do you think this class is and especially taking into account Soros pushes them up to 14, how much space is left? Right. It's very small. I mean, you can basically count on one hand how many positions they have uh, left to fill and it's really – they need some receivers. They need defensive ends. So you're looking at a class, Greg, that's probably going to add potentially five to six more recruits, and they'll finish around 18 or 19 total. I think when you look at the the walk-on players they have on uh, – not on scholarship yet, but they have on the roster that they would like to put on scholarship for the spring that they're going to use some of those scholarships for. And then, obviously, you've always got to be aware of what the transfer portal brings you. There's always some players that – come in or enter that portal late and people want to take a look at them and TCU kind of looked at that last year and looked at it from the standpoint where they want to keep at least two or three back so in case someone comes across the portal that they would have a chance to go get and some of those kids they didn't have a chance to get this year simply because they didn't have any scholarships but to answer your question they're they're probably looking at maybe uh between 18 to 19 uh total in this class well, let's go ahead and uh, you mentioned Garrett Hayes, the four-star offensive tackle from Athens, Texas. Greg, when you look at Garrett Hayes, uh, what is it about him that makes him such a special recruit? Well, he's mean. That's the thing that I love about him. And this year he was able to um, – playing a different style of offense. I mean, he was always one of those guys who was just a drive blocker with what Athens did before transitioning to more spread them out style this year. So he was able to get more college ready, I think, a little bit more experience playing in a, a more versatile style of spread offense there uh, in 2019, and I think that will serve him well. And one interesting thing that I kind of noted as we were getting preparation for the show today is uh, he's now the second highest all-time per 247 sports uh, recruit and that's major for Gary Patterson to have a guy I think like that up front. Jeremy when you look at uh, you know some of the uncertainty I guess that's happened on offense you know questions about Sonny Cumbie even Curtis Looper now potentially becoming uh, you know in the running to become the head coach at New Mexico um, how has that affected this class and how do have they been able to kind of keep uh, like you said some of these top end guys together? Well, when you look at where kind of where Sonny Cumbie stands right now, I, th I think Gary Patterson's going to give him a benefit of the doubt, so to speak. It's probably not in what TC fans want to hear, but overall, I think you look at the execution last year, it wasn't real great for TCU. Offensive line receivers 
dropping passes, and you had a true freshman quarterback. But the stability to, to keep Sonny around is big because he's such a great person. He's a great recruiter. Kids love him up at TCU. Recruits gravitate toward him. And the the thing that they've, they've always had, Curtis Looper, everyone that knows Coach Looper, he's – He's, he's been a name on everyone's list, it seems like, every year. Every year I've covered TCU, it seems like every year I'm talking about Curtis Looper being on this watch list or he's on this other watch list. So they've always done a pretty good job of, of being able to control the talk from the outside uh, with, with coaches being in, in the running for certain positions. And I think overall this this class here recently, it, they've, they've just decided, like I said earlier, just to, to stick together, and they're really excited about – coming in and, and, and getting this thing turned around. And, and sometimes I always tell a lot of people, not necessarily uh, – it, it, because they have a bad season doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to lose recruits because recruits look at it different. Greg will tell you the same thing. They look at it over a period of time. If they if they consecutively have losing season after losing season after losing season, that's going to raise some eyebrows. And the same way it, it affects the winning. If, if you win a lot, recruits are going to gravitate toward that. But for TCU, they really haven't had that span of really bad seasons over and over again. And so that's why they've been able to successfully go out and get these guys. But it, it for me, just covering the team as long as I have, I really haven't seen recruits back off just because they hear talk about other uh, coaches getting positions elsewhere. And they've always done a really good job. And Gary Patterson's really the catalyst behind that. He gets out there and gets in front of these recruits and lets them know what's going on, and if there are changes, what he's going to do to, to make everything better. I certainly think if you throw out the win-loss record that TCU has a lot to really sell to a recruit right now, especially with what they've done, uh, started to transition on the offense. They're going to have a guy like Jalen Rager going into the NFL draft uh, to spotlight as well. Uh, throw out the recruiting rankings. You know and I know, Jeremy, covering this team over the last uh, 12 to 15 years, especially on the recruiting trail, uh, Gary Patterson and his staff do things a little bit differently. They don't always fall in line with your traditional uh, thoughts and um, ranking, so to speak, from some of the recruiting services. Garrett Hayes, we've talked about him. He's the clear-cut probably number one guy uh, on the commitment list. But in your opinion, who who are some of the others or another top guy that we should really be paying attention to or a Horned Frog fan should really know his name uh, come signing day? Well, that's, that's a good question. Um, Patrick Jenkins really jumps off the chart because he was committed to LSU so long, and, and as we all know, there's there's decommitments and there's times where colleges kind of tell you, hey, it might be best to look around a little bit, and, and sometimes they drop those players, and they, they say face and let the kids go out and, and make an announcement that they're decommitted, but some of those kids, let's face it, they're, they're getting dropped. And For Patrick's case, it, he was not dropped by LSU. LSU would have loved to have had him. Uh, had him uh, that he was one of their top rated recruits on their list obviously LSU what they've done this year they're they're ranked very high they're undefeated uh, so for them uh, to, to really go into Louisiana and get a flip from him that's a testament to the job Zarnell Fitch does I mean Zarnell Fitch doesn't get enough credit for the guys he he brings in he's done a great job not only recruiting but if you look at the way they've developed their defensive tackles you talk about Corey Bethley and Ross Blacklock those guys have made all Big 12 teams three years in a row. So when you when you take a guy like a, a Patrick Jenkins, that's a four star that really has the ability to play outside or inside, kind of like LJ Collier did when he was at TCU. That's a huge deal for them. That 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 is a huge feather in the cap for the TCU recruiting uh, fans and everything else. That that they should know that TCU did a really good job going out there and getting that kid. Uh, another kid I like, and, and you know me, Greg, I love the small town kids. There's nothing more I like writing about than a, than a small town kid that makes it big. And the kid that I really like, I love his film. He's not rated really high with us, but I think he's really a, a potential steal for TCU. That's Blake Now out of Oklahoma, Plainview, Oklahoma. 6'4", 190 pounds. He's a, he's a receiver that can go up and get the ball, high point the ball. He's got very deceptive speed. He's got a lot of yards. He put up some really good numbers all three years. That's a varsity starter at Plainview. He even played varsity as a freshman. In those small towns, they, they put those athletes up there pretty pretty early. But he's another one I'm really excited for. And, and for that offense that really needs a taller outside receiver, he's going to come in and really have a chance to make an impact early on. And it, you can say the same thing about the other receivers they have, Jimmy Holiday and, and Danny Gray out of Glenn Junior College. Danny Gray might be the answer to Jalen Rager leaving early because those two guys, if you remember 
Greg, when we were covering the 2017 class, Danny Gray was really uh, an athletic player that everyone talked about. We all knew about the academic issues coming out of high school, so we didn't know where he was going to really fit in to, to where he where he was going to sign. He ended up signing with Missouri, but ended up having to go JUCO anyway. But we all knew then that he was extremely talented, extremely fast, and had a chance to do really big things if he went to the right school. And I think with him being committed to TCU, he's a he's a perfect answer for them losing Jalen Rager. And, and if he can get in, and, and he's not going to be there until the summer, so he's got to come in and really work hard, learn the offense, and, and get out there. But he's definitely got the athleticism to make big plays for the next year. Yeah, I think he would have been a clear-cut four-star if uh, he would have had the academics coming out of high school. James Madison High School in the Dallas area really lit up the Nike camp. Denny Gray did. Uh, was an unknown guy when he stepped on the field to compete there but a lot of people knew his name by the time uh signing day came around when he signed with missouri yeah and greg when you look at especially the texas guys on this list who's maybe one guy who who kind of stands out as one who's gone a little bit under the radar well i think michael nichols is a guy who's went under the radar and that's because he had such a transition from his junior year to his senior year i think he probably gained and you're talking with the coach over there gained like 20 or 30 pounds uh, in the off season and was a completely different dude when he stopped, stepped onto the field um, for spring ball uh, back in the spring of 2019. He continued to look good on tape um, going forward. So I think that's a guy to really keep an eye on. He's listed at 6'4", 255 right now, but has frame to add. Um, and then also has a, a long wingspan. So I think there are a few guys on – on this commitment list or a couple of them and Michael Nichols and uh, Tyler Bailey um, who are position versatile offensive linemen. Um, but I think Nichols has a chance to stick at tackle uh, and be that guy who could potentially grow into a true blindside protector. And that's very valuable in any class. Jeremy, uh, let's finish up with this. When you look at the landscape, you mentioned only maybe four or five, six spots left in this class. Who are some of the guys who you think that are left that TCU could land in the, in the coming week and also the next coming weeks before the, the final signing day? Yeah, that's kind of what I was saying. It, it, it's, it's kind of funny because you look at the season they had and you're thinking, oh, they're going to they're gonna have to scramble to find some of these guys. But they're really in the running for some really good players. Bud Clark out of Alexandria, Louisiana is a four-star. Uh, they have an extremely good chance of getting him and, and – Yet another four-star added to the class. Uh, Quentin Johnson, Johnson out of Temple. I mean, you, you lose coaches down at Texas. TCU is the one school, and Malcolm Kelly has done a tremendous job recruiting him. They're the one school, even after he committed to Texas, that stayed on him. And I think that meant a lot to, to Quentin. And they actually have a, a pretty decent relationship, those two do. And and I think it, it could come down to the wire for that. I'm not saying TCU is going to have a chance to steal him or anything like that, but it, it would be – pretty close to you it, i would just tell tc fans and other recruiting fans to, to keep a close eye on it because they are doing everything they can to at least convince quentin that he would have a chance to come in and make an impact pretty early just like i said about blake now just having that tall outside receiver and, and quentin's definitely a guy to watch chandler morris i mean you don't know what's going to happen with chandler because chad just took the job at auburn but people i've spoken with still say it's a it's an oklahoma tcu battle TCU really came in there late, and I, I think the family likes Sonny Cumbie. Uh, I, I've heard that Chandler wants to kind of stay re relatively close to home. And let's talk about TCU's depth chart at quarterback right now. They've only got Max Duggan, that's the healthy quarterback. Matthew Baldwin, the transfer from Ohio State, he's not healthy right now. He didn't go through last season. They've lost uh, Mike Collins to the portal. Justin Rogers obviously put his name in the portal earlier this season. Alex Dalton was only there. I mean, he was going to be a senior anyway. So they, they've only really got one scholarship quarterback on that roster. So if you're a 2020 quarterback right now, they, they, they've got Jimmy Holiday that played quarterback in high school. He's, he's more of an athlete. Eli Williams out of Oklahoma is another quarterback. But there's not a whole lot of quarterbacks on that roster. So if you're a 2020 guy, you've got to be looking at that and thinking, man, I, if I could come in, I, I may not start because Duggan's a, a – he, he did pretty well as a true freshman last year. But you could – easily be a second or third st stringer by the time you're on campus so if they can finish with those guys and and add in some guys like uh cory wren's another guy that's been talking to them out of louisiana uh they've got robert scott big offensive lineman out of arkansas that's been talking to them they've got some names out there that are committed to other schools at the moment but tcu still still very much in the picture for a lot of those guys 
That's Jeremy Clark. You can follow him at, on Twitter at jclarkhfb. Uh, he's a publisher for Horn Frog Blitz as part of the 247 Sports Network. And, of course, we've got Greg Powers over here, Next Level Athletes. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to doing it again real soon.